I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my solutions to GCSE previous papers. Let me thank the organization for sharing all these questions with public. Now, this is the question paper where calculator is allowed. And there are about 21 questions and we have 1 hour 30 minutes to solve this. Let us see how to solve these questions. All the questions should be solved using black pen. The very first question here is, well, these are the instructions. Answer all questions, write your answers in space provided. You must write down all the stages in your working. The scatter diagram shows information about 12 girls. So there are total 12 girls. It shows the age of each girl and the best time she takes to run 100 meters. So let me just push this page a bit here. I hope you can see the graph now. So we have to basically draw line of best fit. The idea is to have same number of points on either side of the line. So that's the whole idea, right? So uh, we could actually join these two points to draw the line of best fit. So with that, we'll have a couple of points on the left side and a couple of points on the right side. Remember that this is going to be not a very accurate solution. So, so you know, you can actually take freedom of drawing a line which can actually give you a good equation also, correct? So if I take y-intercept of, let's say, let's say like this, let's, let's do it. Okay, so let's do it like this. Okay. So let me take some, so basically, we are trying to draw a line which is in between, correct? So I think that these three points are kind of critical uh, to draw our lines. So we'll manage with these three points. So if I do something like this, it's not a bad idea, right? So, so we'll just draw a line here. So this line is a pretty good line since you can see that we have some points on the right side above it and some points below it. These two points are slightly farther away but we have many other points on the left side. So that could be the line of best fit to answer most of the questions, right? The, the very first question here is write down the type of correlation right so the very first question here is we need to write down the type of correlation the type of correlation is negative since the slope is negative right so we can write this as negative right so in this box here we can type negative correlation so the line is coming downwards that's the whole idea right now, based on this line, there are a few more questions. The question here is, Christina is 11 year old. Her best time to run 100 meters is 12 seconds. The point representing this information would be an outlier on the scatter plot. Explain why. So let's check. So for 11 year old, what is the best time? So let's look into our line now. So for 11 year old, so as you can see, hopefully, there is 11 year old. So if we go up on the 11 year old, what time do we get? We get a time which is kind of uh, more than 15, correct? In the question, it says, Christina is 11 year old. Her best time to run 100 meters is 12 seconds. Only 12 seconds. So we have a point here for Christina, right? Definitely, this is very, very far from our line and all the points given. Therefore, it is an outlier. Do you see that? So it's very far away, so it is an outlier. So we can explain this. The point representing this information would be an outlier on the scatter diagram. So it is an outlier. since it is very far away from the line 
of best fit clear so that is how you could answer this the second question is debbie is 15 year old debbie says the scatter diagram shows i should take less than 12 seconds to run 100 meters comment on what debbie says so let's once again look into it so 15 year old well the 15 year old is right there right so so in this portion we have no data now whenever you have scatter plots we cannot extrapolate this information right so we cannot say that like you know soon this will be like touching this axis which is absurd right so we cannot really uh, extrapolate this information and therefore we cannot comment on this right so debbie is 15 year old debbie says the scatter diagram shows i should take less than 12 seconds to run 100 meters comment on this well that is that cannot be concluded since there is no data for 15 year old right and we cannot extrapolate right so that is how we are going to answer this perfect so based on the graph very first question we had two we have negative correlation and secondly uh, you cannot extrapolate that kind of information right second question is expand and simplify so 5 times p plus 3 we'll multiply by 5 both the terms you get 5 p plus 15 minus 2 minus minus becomes plus 4 p now we can combine the like terms right so we'll do 5 p plus 4 p and the other ones we have 15 minus 2 5 plus 4 is 9 and here we have plus 13 so that becomes our solution right? so when you expand simplify you get 9p plus 13 let's move on to question number 3 here is a trapezium drawn on a centimeter grid the question is on the grid draw a triangle equal in area of this trapezium so that means we need to find area of the trapezium that's the first thing so let's first find area of this trapezium the formula is a plus b times the height divided by 2 now in this case a is 2 centimeters correct these are the parallel sides and B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 centimeters. The height is 1, 2, 3, 4. Using these values, we get this as 2 plus 7 times 4 divided by 2. Okay. So that means 2 plus 7, 9 times 4, 36. We can say 9 times 2, right? This goes 2 times, which is 18 centimeters square. So the area for this is 18 centimeters square. Now we need to find height and base of the triangle to get the same area, right? So for a triangle, uh, area of triangle is what? Area of triangle is half of base times height and that should be equal to 18 that means base times height should be 18 times 2 so we are looking for base times height as 36 correct so you could have any dimension which gives you a product of 36 for example you could make uh, 9 times 4 right so 9 times 4 you could use that will give you 36 for example correct so we that could be one of our solutions so let's draw that uh, and the triangle could be a right triangle or any shape correct so let's take a 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's fine. So let me just, uh, and we'll go down from here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'll have a, a triangle which will be 4 units in this direction. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this triangle with 4 cm and 9 cm gives you the same area, correct? So we have taken a right triangle. However, even if you draw a triangle which will be kind of like this, that is also okay, correct? So that is how you could actually draw the triangle with the same area as that of the given trapezoid. Question number 4 is, when a biased six-sided dice is thrown once, the probability that it will land on four is 0.65. The biased dice is thrown twice. Ami draws this probability tree diagram. The diagram is not correct. So the question for you is, write down two things that are wrong with the probability tree diagram. Okay. So let's look into this. So it, it shows probability for 4 is 0 0.65, right? So probability for not 4, a complement of this, will be 1 minus 0 0.65, which is 0 0.35, correct? Now with that, let's look into the diagram. So in the first throw, we get 0 0.65 to land on 4, and this information is 0 0.25 that should have been 0 0.35 correct then only we get one so that is wrong now in the second throw to land on four well this is again wrong to land on four the probability will actually remains as 0 0.65 correct so so that has been uh, given in a wrong way not to land on four will always remain as uh, 0.35 correct so that is how you could give uh, the reasons okay now these two are actually correct so there are three mistakes here you can write down any two of them correct so we have one that uh, in the first throw probability of not four is equal to 0 0.35 not 0 0.25 correct and the second could be in the second throw we have probability of uh, 4 and land on 4 and 4 should be 0 0.65 times 0 0.65 and not 0 0.65 times 0 0.35 so these are the two mistakes which uh, we have pointed out okay let's see the next question now which is question number five question number five abc is a right angle triangle Work out the size of angle ABC. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. Okay. So let's find uh, the angle ABC. We know this is the adjacent side, and that is hypotenuse. And therefore, we can use cosine. So cos of ABC will be equal to 7 over 11. So angle ABC will be cos inverse of 7 over 11, right? We'll measure it in degrees. So let's find cos inverse of 7 divided by 11. We get a value which is 50.47 degrees, correct? We need to write down the answer to one decimal place. So we're going to round this to... 50.5 degrees. Now that is important, right? So let's write down the answer here in the space given. We get 50.5 degrees. 
Now part B of this question is, the length of the side AB is reduced by 1 centimeter. So now AB is equal to 10 centimeters instead of 11. The length of BC is still 7. BC is still 7 centimeters. Angle ACB is 90, so it's still a right angle triangle. So angle ACB equals to 90 degrees. Will the value of cosine ABC increase or decrease? Right, so if you look into the situation, we are now reducing the length. So basically now, since we have reduced the length, the triangle will be kind of like this to get us 10 centimeters, right? So, so let's, let me write down the solution for part B here, right? So what we see is that the, the angle ABC decreases. So that implies that the cosine of ABC will increase. All right, so that is clear. So that is one reason. Otherwise, we can also find now the new uh, cosine. So we have cos of ABC equals to 7 over 10, right? Earlier, it was 7 over 11, okay? So we clearly see that 7 over 10 is greater than 7 over 11, right? Since we know 77 is greater than 70, correct? So that's the other reason. Just calculate the values, right? And you can clearly show that uh, the cosine increases, right? So you can write down your answer here. One is that the, will the value of cos ABC increase or decrease? It will increase clearly. You must have a reason for your answer. This is when angle decreases, cosine increases for angle theta between 0 degrees to 90 degrees. Is that clear? So within this 90 degrees thing. This is one reason. Second is calculated value new value is 7 over 10 which is greater than 7 over 11 is it okay so those could be good reasons for your answer now let's look into question number six it says there are some counters in a bag the counters are red or white or blue or yellow four types bob is going to take at random a counter from the bag the table shows each of the probabilities that the counter will be blue or will be yellow so probability for blue is 0.45 and that for yellow is 0.25 there are 18 blue counters we know these are 18 in numbers 18 blue counters in the bag the probability that the counter Bob takes will be red is twice probability that the counter will be white. That means there are twice the number of red counters than blue counters. clear so the probability is double of red work out the number of red counters so we need to find now the number of red counters okay so first now we have the probability of uh, blue and yellow counters now from here we can actually since we also know that the blue counters are 18 and the probability is 45 so we get an idea about uh, total number of counters correct so we know probability for blue is 0 0.45 and that is equal to number of blue counters divided by total number of counters Correct. 
So, so let's call this as uh, blue over t, right? So let me say total is t. So in that case, we know that blue is 18. So you now we have 18 over t. So we can find what t is. So t is 18 divided by 0 0.45. Clear? So let's find this answer. 18 divided by 0.45 gives us 40. So there are 40 counters. Clear? Now, out of 40 counters, we know 18 are blue counters. Well, we have to find how many are red counters. So we can actually find how many are yellow also. We know probability of yellow is 0 0.25. That means yellow counter over 40, right? So that gives you y as, this means quarter actually, right? So it is 0 0.25 times 40, and that gives you 10 counters, right? So that should be 10, okay? quarter, right? So quarter of 40 is 10. So we know that this total here is, is 28, right? So, so now we know that number of, now as far as we are also given that red counters are twice, right? So if red counters are two times white, if we have white counters here, does it make sense? So we know that twice, uh, red plus white, you can say, is equal to twice white plus white, and that is equal to total is 40 minus 28. Correct? So that means 3 times white is equal to 40 minus 28. So from 3, if we take away, we get 12, and that gives you the white counters to be 12 divided by 3, which is 4, right? So we get 4 of these. And twice is red, and therefore, red should be 2 times 4, which is 8. So we get these as 8, right? So total, as you can add, 12 plus 28, you get 40. Is that clear to you? So work out the number of red counters in the bag. So we have 8 red counters. Clear? Part B of this question is, a marble is going to be taken at random from a box of marbles. Well, this is a different question. Okay. So, it's a different question. New question. A marble is going to be taken at random from a box of marbles. The probability that the marble will be silver is 0 0.25. So, probability for silver is 0 0.5, means 50%, right? Half. There must be an even number of marbles in the box, right? So, they must explain why. Okay. So, the answer is yes. You need to explain why. Because probability for others is half, correct? Now, which is also an integer number. So half of even number number will be a whole number, right? Whole number. Therefore, it should be an even number. Is it clear? So if it is an odd number, half will be a fraction. You cannot have marbles in fraction, right? So, yes. You could also say, well, half of an odd number is not a whole number. Okay. So that is how we are going to answer this question. I hope that is absolutely clear.
Let's take the next question, which is question number 7. We need to solve an equation here. 5 minus x over 2 equals to 2x minus 7. So we'll just cross multiply. So we get 5 minus x equals to 2 times 2x minus 7. So we have 5 minus x equals to 4x minus 14. Bring x terms together. So we get 5 plus 11 equals to 4x plus x, I'm sorry, 14, right, this is 14. So 14 plus 5 is 19 equals to 5x. So that means 19 divided by 5 is equal to x. So the value of x is 19 divided by 5, correct? The next question, question number 8 is, A, B, C, D, E is a pentagon, five-sided figure. The angle BCD is twice angle ABC. So ABC and BCD. If this is X, this is going to be 2X, right? So that is how we are given these angles. Work out the size of BCD. So we need to find the side of BCD. We need to find this angle. Okay. So here, since it is five sides, sum of interior angles. Let's do the work here. Sum of interior angles. for pentagon, five-sided figure, is equal to, so 180 degrees times 5 minus 3, n minus 3 is the formula, right? So that gives us 5 minus 2, sorry. So the formula is given by 180 degrees times n minus 2, right? That is the sum of angles interior angles okay that is the formula so we we'll, we are going to use this formula it's a five sided figure so we get 180 times 3 so that becomes total so when you multiply 24 540 is the total angle in degrees now we need to find the value of x first we have this is 90 degrees so so the total angle could be written as uh, 90 plus 115 plus 125 plus 2x plus x, right? We can write x plus 2x. I mean, x plus 2x is 540, correct? So from here, we get 3x is equal to 540 minus all this. Minus 90 minus 115 minus 125, clear? So we have 3x equals 2. Let's use calculator. 540 minus 90 minus 115 minus 125 that gives us 210 so x is 210 divided by 3 which is 70 degrees correct so we get this angle as 70 so angle bcd is equals to 2 times 70 degrees which is 140 degrees clear so we can write down this answer here as 140 degrees is already written there. So that is how we are going to answer this question. I hope it is absolutely clear. Now here is question number 9. We will take a break here. You can always pause the video, answer this question. I hope you have understood the solution so far. Feel free to write a comment, share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that would be great. We will take up these questions in part two. Thank you and all the best.